Andrew McGahan for Severe MMA here in SPG Concord alongside John Cavanagh. And John, a different setting from normal. This is uh, your under construction new office, I believe. Yeah, I'm calling it the Eagle's Nest. Um, I can look out that window and see the grappling area. I can look out that window behind the camera and see the striking area. I want to get a megaphone so I can shout down at people. But uh, it's a bit bare at the moment, but it'll be nice in the next two, two weeks or so. The last time we were here, we were talking about a big seminar that was happening, the Injury Prevention Seminar. It went off at the weekend to massively positive reviews. Um, fortunately, I was in Stockholm. Tell us how it went. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, of course, the information was, was top-notch. Uh, Dan Healy had set up um, a who's who of orthopedic consultants and neurosurgeons. Um, a really good guy over from Britain, um, a sports science guy about weight cutting and stuff. So but the information was brilliant, but just as important, if not more important than that, was some of the people that came along, like uh, Senator Catherine Noon came along and expressed, um, she was impressed with it, and it was sort of changing her mind about it and seeing just how professional this sport is. And, um, and we're doing this ourselves at the moment. We don't have to do this, it's non-regulated, but we're starting to go down that road make it a more legitimate sport in the government's eyes. And uh, it was a very proud moment for me. I'm doing this 20 years, and to see the lineup that was there in the day and the advancements that were made, and, and a bunch of guys coming up at the end of it saying that they want to work with me more. Like, there's a guy there giving a talk, and um, his name escapes me now, but he was kind of the top guy for WADA in Ireland, and he was um, saying he wants to meet up with me to give me some sort of tips, so to speak, on simple things that can be done to bring in more regulation with regards to performance enhancing drugs for MMA in Ireland. Um, he actually said, I don't know, did you notice that uh, when John Jones was caught for the um, cocaine, he was also um, had high levels of testosterone? Low. Well, I think what I saw was that he had unnaturally low levels of testosterone, that the average person is one to one, and I think John's test was like 0.19 or 0.29 and they're saying like not that it's a masking agent but it's like no one's testosterone should be that low especially at one of the best mixed oh. martial arts of all time okay i didn't actually see and i didn't he, he said he was five to one or six to one but you're kind of, you're allowed to be five to one yeah. or something but he was saying it's kind of convenient to be just exactly but anyway because what a lot of people say is that after strenuous activity, the tests are taken and your levels are all over the place. That's why people were giving off about Kung Lee's test because uh -huh. it was done right after physical activity. But um, from so that, my guys do any of that kind of stuff, so I just never learned about it. Exactly, it's um, another oh uh, an issue for another day. But a lot, a lot of people were talking at the weekend about how you had Brad Pickett and the UFC's back and coming over, and then the negative publicity initially from Catherine Noon. What's that like for you? A massive turnaround. It must have been gratifying. Um, yeah. Um, you know, she, she tweeted that from a position of, by definition, ignorance. She, she hadn't even seen the sport at that stage. Um, I can forgive her for that. I, I, I understand is that there is a lot. There, was, there used to be a lot of negativity around um, MMA. Um, and I think she was looking at something from the 90s or something like that. But long story short, when she did realize that she was wrong, she put her hands up. She apologized. I met her on the day. Um, she's a very pleasant woman, and her mind is now open, and uh, it's just another uh, another positive for Irish MMA that we're getting people like her. I had another senator out here, I always say her name wrong, Mary, I want to say Marie Lou Louis McDonald. Oh, McDonald, yeah, something like that, and she was a hilarious woman, but she was out here on Saturday and Sunday, uh, peace went out on Tuesday that, I, that she did on the gym and on the sport in general. And uh, so, I mean, you know, a bunch of senators, a bunch of ministers, there's, there's a huge amount of positive momentum now behind Irish MMA, which is fantastic. And one final thing on the technical side of things, you put something on your Facebook page today about, um, about the seminar in total, but that the Northern, the IMMAFI, which is the Irish International Mixed Martial Arts Federation, has separated from the North and South. So the North are now affiliated with the Northern Government or they have backing and recognition from the Northern Government and there's some sort of plans in place for a Southern Committee to be set up? Uh, correct. Um, I didn't quite understand at the start why Northern Ireland were having their own specific organisation because, not to get into the whole 
political thing, which I have no interest in. But there was a, a Great Britain one already in place, so I didn't know why they did they, they just didn't fall in as part of them, or fall in as part of the you know do a, do like I think the boxing is a thirty two county um, organization, but they did it themselves. Um, so that's that's that. So we're going to have a separate Republic of Ireland one. Um, I think there is some national governing bodies which are just 26 county so this will be a 26 county one and uh, we initially set up the iapa underneath the iawa so as to get uh, some kind of formal recognition but now we'd like the iapa to possibly affiliate with the international mma federation because that's more you know it's mixed martial arts we're not a wrestling organization we're, we're mixed martial arts so um the first Step was a necessary one, but in the long run, and um, we would like to affiliate to the IMAF, and the ball is beginning to get rolling on that. So, keeping on the topic of your social media, um, you posted a nice picture yesterday about Independence Day uh, after a little after a barrage of tweets to John Cavanaugh travel uh, agencies about when people should book their flights for May. And um, yeah. you went on the radio yesterday. You made it clear not to book your flights, friend. What was that whole situation? Yeah, no. The, he, he, obviously, it's up in the air about the uh, about what date the fight is on. Uh, there's nothing 100 percent yet, and it was just that I was getting so many messages, even from my own family, that were booking flights and hotels, and I felt something should be said to say that it has not been set yet. If it's not on UFC.com, it's not set. So it might be May. It might not be. It might be later in the summer. It might not be. It, nothing is 100% yet. Um, who knows? They might announce it this weekend. Connor's doing a Q&A in Vegas. Um, so it could be announced then. But my only point was, don't go tweeting me, making me feel guilty. Hey, I have five nights booked in the MGM. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know if it's on that date yet. So just hang on till it's on UFC.com. No need to tweet me and ask me anything else. UFC.com. And then book your flights and hotels. And, and we will try to... Um, Put a little bit of pressure on these travel companies to come up with some decent uh, packages and, and um, you know decent priced flights and stuff like that. Or even refunds for the ones that were already advertising Conor McGregor travel packages for me. Well, I mean, surely from a legal point of view, that they, they must have to do that. You know, if it's a Conor McGregor thing, um, I, I didn't see that personally. But if someone bought that and that's not what they're getting, well, of course they should get a hundred percent refund. Let's talk about the fight. It's the fight a lot of people have wanted to see for quite a while now, even though if you look in America, some people are saying McGregor's not ready, he hasn't fought a wrestler. Jose Aldo is undoubtedly the top 145 pounder to have ever lived. Where, is Con- where would he cause Conor trouble, in your opinion? Or does um, he? You know, it's, uh, every, every fight that's come, uh, the last couple of fights that have come have always been, well, this is the guy, you know? And I really, like, have absolutely no disrespect. Um, I think Aldo has been a fantastic champion. But I just think his time is up. And I think it's going to be pretty one-sided. Um, it's, it's, it's almost as though he's made um, a career out of beating small wrestlers that are learning striking. And he's done it brilliantly. And he's, so, he's very, very fast. He's a nice one, too. He's got a decent lead left hook. And, of, of course, he's got pretty decent kicks. Not, not that he's been doing a huge amount of them lately, but he is brilliant at using that against, you know, team alpha male, it seems to be, guys that he intimidates with the striking and then shoot from the other side of the cage. He's not going to have this advantage with Connor. He's in against somebody that I believe is a better striker. Hits a hell of a lot harder than him. I mean, in his last couple of fights, he hasn't stopped people. He went 25 minutes with, with, in, in his last one. Um, he landed some decent shots and shot and didn't put him down. When Connor lands, people go down. Um, you know, you just have to look at the stats. I don't think anybody can take his shots. Whereas he was, he was hit a lot by Chad Mendes. Um, that's a five foot guy that's kind of learning striking. He's, you, you wouldn't call him an elite level striker. He's, he's getting good, but you would not describe him as an elite level striker. And even at that, he was able to land a lot of power strikes on on Aldo and I just think when Connor lands a power strike well I don't think I know and I'm not trying to convince anybody look at the look at the stats when he lands a power strike it's over do you think that with Aldo making the cut down to 145 for so many years we've heard that it's rough on him not that it isn't rough on Connor but Aldo's been doing it I believe for longer the standard of opposition now that he's fighting you could say that he would have put them away maybe three or four years ago he would have finished these guys 
Is that what you mean about his time is up? Um, partly. Um, he's had so many hard, hard fights. Like, I, that last fight, I don't know if you can recover from that. Like, I, I watched it again last night, actually. And he, did you notice that Mendez had a lot of uppercuts, which is pretty much Connor's danger shot? I did. I did. Um, but a lot of big shots landed on him. And uh, I was even chatting to some of the neurosurgeons at the, at, at the, at the thing, um, the, the safety seminar, and some of our MMA fans, and they saw the fight and they were like, your brain's not really recovering from that. That's, and he's had a bunch of those wars where he's coming out with his face all over the place. So you, just, you only have so many of them in you. And I, I think he's only 28. I actually thought he was in his mid-30s, to be honest. Um, it's just that he's been around so long. But he's had so many big wars, and, and he's been a fantastic champion for, what, a decade now? He hasn't lost him or something. So, huge amount of respect, big big applause. You, you've been there, you've won the wars. Um, but, like, it's just, you can see this in sport all the time. It's just the next guy's turn. And he's done brilliantly so far, but now he's in against a guy. This is an awkward stance that's not intimidated, that's going to come forward. And when he hits, he hits like a train. And I, I, I don't see it going any other way other than pretty one-sided fight. Katie Taylor has shown an interest, I believe is what you said, in training mixed martial arts. Has there been conversations? I know, it's, it's crazy. That was, all, that, was all over, that was all over the internet yesterday, all over Reddit. People getting really excited at the prospect. I was in a cafe today, and there was a Sun newspaper. And I, wasn't, I didn't even... I was telling Orla something about the Star newspaper, and I said, oh, it's a tabloid, it's like the sun there. And then I looked, and there's a picture on the front, could Katie be Connor in the cage or something? And there's a picture of Connor and Katie on, pa- on the front page. And then I flicked through it, and of course, it's a two-page break, Katie going to the octagon or something. I was like, Jesus Christ, it was a throwaway. Um, but what interest? Has she reached out? Has she just said in an interview yeah, she'd be interested? F- yeah. Fuck it, I'll say it. I'm tired. <laughs> 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 well, she was at the event in Dublin. And she was enamored by it. She thought it was incredible. Of course, for any combat athlete to see this kind of crowd, that's what they dream of doing. And besides, you know, obviously she's, I'm a huge fan of Katie Taylor, you know, all the titles she's won, world championships. But in your local shows, I mean, she could be in the national stadium, a couple of hundred people looking at her. She's looking at this in front of, you know, thousands of TV, blah, blah, blah. So I heard through someone that she was interested in coming out and trying um, now it didn't materialize because she has her head down obviously for this is going to be now on sphere MMA isn't it Katie Taylor is coming to oh yeah <laughs> it'll be in the sun tomorrow again 10 page spread but uh, who knows maybe when um, there's uh, she has some major championships this year or something yeah. um, how many more can she win <laughs> she seems to just whoop everybody so she's still only young and she's a fantastic athlete so um, who knows she might turn her hand to this now we already have Obviously, uh, Sinead Kavanagh here, who's, who's a fantastic boxer, and then, of course, goes without saying, Ashling Daly. But, um, yeah, she'd be welcome to come out here and try a class, and who knows? A couple of quick things just that people want to hear. From what I heard from being over in the States about the Crow Park issue was that the loading time to get into Crow Park, there was 150 kilometres worth of cable in the screen above the Stockholm ring the other day. They had been setting up from the Monday any Crow Park yeah. date they had tried, they were, weren't given more than two days loading time in and out. Makes sense. Do you think, like, it's fair to say that we didn't expect the growths that Connor would get in terms of no- notoriety. Do you think that he is big enough for the UFC to say, we don't care about the pay-per-view points, bring him to Ireland, let's do the marquee, he can have his defence there? Um, I mean, you'll know more about this than I will. You were always at those press conferences and stuff like that. Um, I only heard bits of it, the last one. But Dana seemed to be pretty adamant that um, the timing is wrong, uh, as in, you know, we have to be out by 11 p.m., whereas at least in Stockholm they could do it. What was it on, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m.? Uh, the main event kicked off at 3.30, quarter to 4. Was it that late? Yeah. Wow. The pre- we were leaving the arena at 6 after the press conference. Wow. So we can't do that here, just the curfew. Um, and that's an indoor arena, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously we can't do that. Um, so I, I guess the optimistic side of me would say yeah who knows maybe the realistic side of me when I heard it explained that way it was kind of like ah okay it's never happening 
but I don't know. Connor seems fairly sure it's going to happen, so I won't question him. And just from that, from what I heard from a lot of respected US journalists, like Lorenzo Fertitta has come to the forefront recently. He never did anything media-wise. He's starting to talk a lot more now. People say they have never seen Lorenzo as infatuated with a fighter as they have he is with Connor. Almost as if, as I'm sure you've realised, you've been in the suite, you saw the 20 grand bottle of whiskey <laughs> that he got. Do you think it, that, could, that could be the key link to it? Uh, maybe, maybe. I, like I said, the, I, I would love it, but the, there's a realistic side to me that's saying now he's, what did he do in Boston? He blew Three, it up. 3.1 million peak and 2.68, I think, as an average, which was 1 million higher than the previous Fox Sports 1 record. Yeah, I just think he's, he's American now. You know, he's, he's, he's for the American market. You just know that he's going to be pay-per-view gold. And, um, I'd be very curious to see how the numbers go, obviously, for the title fight. Uh, I, be, I, I will predict that they, it's a new record. And then it's going to be very hard to say, all right, now do you want to take one-tenth of that money and do it in Ireland? Even if, even if he's with Uncle Frank the Fourth, I still... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much he'll look after his nephew <laughs> in that situation. Well, then from that, I asked at the weekend as well about an Irish date potentially for later on this year. At the minute, Scotland, Poland... Um, somewhere Berlin, else no. Berlin in July and then potentially London in October pretty much the general consensus, consensus was if Connor loses no problem we're coming back to the O2 but so I guess it's not coming back to the O2 yeah. do you think that that's a greater avenue and motivation for one of your other guys in the UFC they could be the headline act who's to say with another win or two Paddy Hulhan isn't fighting for another number one contender shot if not a title fight against Demetrius Johnson do you think there's a big enough demand or in Ash. Ireland or Ash do you think there's not a big enough demand in Ireland that the O2 would sell out again, no problem, with or without Conor McGregor? UFC 93. Barely anyone in the country knew about the sport. Now I've got 60-year-old women stopping me on the street and asking about Conor's kicks. Like, so, yeah, it's, 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 I think that's a bit silly by the UFC to say that, to be honest, because they should have one show a year here. And, of course, it'll sell out. It wouldn't matter who they had on the card. The Irish... I've, I've clearly shown a, a huge interest in not only UFC, uh, that promotion, but in, in MMA in general. You go around the, the local shows, they're always fairly much sold out, so it would 100% sell out no matter, even if none of my guys were on the card, it would still sell out, but it would be great to have a, a, an annual show here so that uh, my guys could get, could get fights. And finally, John, one of the biggest things uh, you had a problem with, if you don't mind me saying about the Boston card, was Joe Rogan's commentary on uh, Kyle Pender's fight. As someone who's watched a lot of fights, you do real, like Joe does that style of commentary. I think he's influenced by the first minute or two. Have you said it to him? Will you say it to him? Is it something that you would address? Because you're not a man to shy away from saying something face to face. No, of course I would say, I would say, I would say it to him. Um, it's probably going to be out of my head by then. It's, that's history it's gone like i'm just stating facts everybody when i said that i don't think it's any big news to say that he will pick a guy and it kind of makes his commentary fun sometimes you know because he is sort of that way um and i, I enjoy watching uh, joe rogan or listening to joe rogan's commentary it's, it's generally pretty decent um now in saying that he does have a legion of what's he say train by day Joe, Joe Rogan podcast by night. You know, so he has this legion of fans that, you know, he's a popular comedian and he's a good personality. So when he's watching a fight and he starts seeing a thing, well, then there's 100,000 zombies watching it going, Joe Rogan said this, so then that must be it. So I could, I could see where they were going. Um, but there was a reason why three judges scored it that way. There's no big conspiracy theory. So just, yeah. Um, if, if it comes up in conversation or Joe says something to me, I have no problem argue my case well John thank you very much for the time in your new office uh, before we let you go is there anything coming up breaking news another uh, seminar because from looking at that at the weekend that seminar came at the perfect time Dan Henderson got dropped in his 15th fight in his career it was brought up at the press conference and he said no I'm fine I was fine that was a bad stoppage Andy Ogle tried to single leg the referee after his stoppage and protested as well, well he was fine right wasn't he oh yeah completely Made fine country, he was fine yeah do you think that fighters need to be made aware of this more so than coaches? Uh, everybody does. Information is key. Education is key. And all fighters and all... This was, a, this was such a big thing for Irish MMA. 
that we weren't putting our head in the sand about it. Rugby union players should know about this. Uh, you know, kids rugby should know about this. Kids rugby coaches should know about this. What the spot? It's not always like someone getting hit and falling down. You know, that's an obvious concussion or knockout. There was, there was telltale signs of where someone might look fine, but you have to ask certain questions to get the reaction where you can see he's not really in the room. And um, so I think education is key for these type of things. Um, is there any more coming up? Straight away people were like, oh, I can't make that date. When's the next one? If you have any idea the financial cost that goes into yeah. running these, there's a reason why it was the first one of its type in the world. Because there's a huge cost in running this. Now, we were very lucky that Professor Dan Healy, he's the one that pretty much funded it all. Or, or I don't really know how he raised the money for it, but if people were like, oh, I had something on that day. When's the next one? You put it on. And I'll go along to it. But to put on something like that is in tens and tens of thousands it's not it's not hundreds or a thousand it's tens and tens of thousands so it was it was bad form that people missed out on that but I, I don't like focusing on the negative there was a huge amount of people that did show up and if we can do one again great but it'll be it'll be a while before there's another one so if the electricity goes off in Beaumont we know who to blame <laughs> Dan yeah, Healy yeah Dan Healy Good okay John thank you very much for your time